Generally speaking, in life, you do get what you pay for, but the job of reviewers is to highlight the outliers, the ones that aren't worth it, and when the day arrives that something disappoints, it must be called out. Today is not that day. I really like these. They've lived up to my hopes and expectations. But I'm also well aware of why I like them. These things definitely have flavour, and that's a good thing. But the thing about flavour is that some people will love it, and some people won't. The Invictus are excellent for those that they're made for, and not so much for those that they're not. Knowing which category you fall into is vital. So allow me to run through it all so that you can decide for yourself whether they are made for you. Thanks to Asetech Simsports for providing the Invicta pedals seen here for review. This video wouldn't be possible without their assistance or an unexpected windfall from a great aunt Brenda's estate. Watch the entire video before you make up your mind, but places to buy are listed in the description, including discount codes. Most notably, you can get 5% off Asetech's official EU, US and global shops using code Danny Lee and 3% off UK distributor SimDemon with code Danny Lee Free. Don't make a move until you've read through the description below. What you see here are the Asetech Simsports Invicta S series pedals. The S series means that they are split into separate pieces. This split version was brought about by popular demand, so although Asetech Simsports tends to have a pretty tight grip on the overall direction and way the products look and are, they have displayed a willingness to listen, at least. The price as of recording is roughly £770, give or take, from UK resellers, including tax, €950 Euros from Acetec Europe, including tax, $760 before tax from Acetec US, just to give you a sample. If you include the optional clutch pedal, this pushes things to around £1,000 or €1,250, including tax, or $1,000 before tax. The S series are slightly more expensive than the standard model. This sounds expensive, and I think that perhaps even today, Acetech struggles to shake that label of being pricey because the Invictors, these things, were the very first thing that they launched. So a new brand comes along, Acetech Sim Sports, and the first thing you see of them is a pedal set costing roughly a grand. A lot of people pigeonhole them and compartmentalize them as being too pricey and out of reach, and probably haven't looked their way since. But whilst the prices may mostly occupy the higher end numbers wise, I think value for money is still pretty good. These are far from the most expensive hydraulic pedal sets. Only Simagic and Conspit appear to be bringing something hydraulic for cheaper, and there are differences in the execution. I wouldn't necessarily compare them like for like. I think what's happening is that when we all think of sim racing pedals, we're used to seeing sheet metal, grey, utilitarian looking things, but we're familiar with that. We know the value of them. Acetex pedals look different because they're made different. They're made from aluminium castings instead of predominantly laser cut sheet like a lot of other sim racing pedals are. I think that's what threw us all. It's difficult to mentally assign a price to something that looks so different. However, it's not difficult to mentally assign a price to them. When you first take them out of the box, they're lovely to hold and admire, and if this is your first contact with an Acetec product, this is the stage at which you will fully understand what they're about. Their stuff is way better in person than it looks on photos. The fact that the body of the pedals are made from castings and are powder coated in a satin black rather than folded sheet and laser cut like Husing Belt and BRS or milled and anodized like Simagic and Moses pedals are for example, there's a real luxury sports car aura about these that just isn't there in any of the other brands I've previously used. Acetex pedals, even the La Primas, are aimed towards those of you with good rigs that have high levels of adjustability, preferably one that looks a bit like this. You need to be able to mount these to a pedal deck that can point pretty much straight towards the base of your seat, because the angle of Acetex pedals are pretty much straight up. There are many cockpits in the lower end of the cost range that just can't do this. You end up with an awkward angle of attack that is miles away from ideal, causing your feet to be on the very ball of your foot instead of flat. And that's if you can even use them at all. So don't buy Acetec pedals before you've checked your cockpit can support the pedals in this way. This is one of the great dividers caused by Acetec Simsport's no compromise approach because if you've got a good cockpit, you'll be golden. But if not, you may be left with your pedals in a position that just doesn't feel right and seems rather unfriendly in a way. And ergonomics is really important in sim racing. Your posture is more important the higher up you go. A short connection cable is what links the two pedals together on the underside with a brake as the central hub. And from there goes the USB-C cable to your computer. 
Care is required during installation. The USB-C cable and the brake pressure sensor are both fairly exposed and one careless movement could bust the wires or the sockets we're plugged into. So pay attention at all times when working on them. Stuff like this always makes me nervous because I'm not clumsy in a harmless Bambi on ice kind of way. I'm clumsy in a devastating smash something valuable in a minute lapse of concentration kind of way. Adjustability is a mixed bag with Acetec pedals because you'll primarily be zeroing in on the exact feeling you want rather than bending the pedals to your will and changing the very nature of them in any big way because ultimately the Invictus are bound to an ideology of imitating hardcore racing cars in Acetec's image. All of the orange anodized metal pieces constitute a part that you can adjust but Honestly, the best way to see what you can adjust and what you can't is by reading the manual. It does a great job of running through all of the options that you have at your disposal, whilst weaving a lot of their own attitude and personality into the mix. Additional accessories are available that unlock a wider range of adjustability, but I wouldn't call them essential. And I know that because I'm using them without any of the optional extras that are available. The standard elastomer and springs are used. I didn't feel the need to adjust anything in any significant way out of a box. I've been using them as they come and I'm a pretty happy camper. In fact, I had to make an extra effort to familiarize myself with the adjustability for the sake of this review. Calibration and setup is very simple and easy and the Acetex RaceHub software is one of, if not the slickest and most confidence inspiring software companions that I've used. This is one of the times you can obviously tell that Acetec is a big company. The software is very swish and polished. Upon connecting the pedals to your computer, you'll notice the presence of diffused LED strips on the heel plate. I'll tell you straight up, these are for the benefit of people outside the rig, not in it, because you will not notice them as you drive. They can be set to change colors and react to flags, car telemetry and such sort, but I took zero notice of it as I sat in the seat. There's almost no chance they will ever catch your eye. However, they are nonetheless an additional, and I stress optional, bit of pizzazz that you can admire from afar and helps visually break up your cockpit and make it look a little bit more alive. And so it comes finally to the first real press of the pedals and I have to say it wasn't what I expected or visualized in my mind. I've seen plenty of folks divided by the Invictus hole punch style pedal faces but beneath my Sparco boots, I think they're really nice. I feel a distinct bite between the sole of a shoe and the pedal with almost adhesive properties to it. I love the feeling of making that metallic contact underfoot every time I shift to the pedal from rest. These pedal faces can be swapped for the smoother Forte style plates and they can be manoeuvred around on their different mounting points. The throttle feels really nice, a long sweep of travel controlled by this rod and tension spring. I certainly feel able to consistently and progressively feed the power in. It feels as smooth as air to me. The end stop isn't cushioned though and it makes a little bit of noise at the end of its travel. You don't notice it at all when using it for circuit racing when throttle action is not so frantic, but for anything more frenetic then you do notice it. Pressing the brake for the first time was quite exciting as it's the first time I'm ever putting my foot to a hydraulic system. But as I sat there in the cockpit I thought the pedal felt quite odd, like it was loosely bolted together but at the same time felt sticky in the initial take up of the pedal. The hydraulic cylinder floats freely on a spherical bearing that means you can wiggle it from side to side just a little bit. This is essential for normal operation of a cylinder, but enough people were confused by this that Acetec had to release an explainer video, you know, explaining why. I was confused by the Invicta hydraulic cylinder's disjointed and disconnected feel as I sat there poking and prodding it, but I was also well aware that I had not yet turned a single lap and I have no idea what a hydraulic brake is supposed to feel like and therefore I should wind my neck in and just judge the results alone. I absolutely believe in the just shut up and use it school of reviewing. And so it was when you're driving, none of that stickiness I described can be felt whatsoever. It's as though your mind tunes it out and the pedal turns into the most direct and communicative connection between leg muscle and on-screen braking. It's really nice. This is as close to a direct neuron link to my brain as I've felt from a brake pedal so far. 
It didn't take long for me to feel as though I was genuinely able to scrape that last 1% of precision from my potential, and I finally understood why some people swear by hydraulic systems, particularly ones such as this, which actually measures the fluid pressure inside the cylinder with what appears to be an automotive grade sensor. It's not really surprising that I like these the most of all pedal sets I've used, considering it's the most expensive pedal set I've had passed through my hands. But the Invictors distinctly top the charts for me. I really like them and I feel like I've got a very strong connection between the sim racer I perceive myself to be and the sim racer these pedals are designed for. And that leads me nicely into a segment about who these are made for because Acer Tech clearly has a certain type of customer in mind. If you fit that description then you will receive pedals that feel crafted for you with big company production values and quality but with enthusiast level performance. However, Acer Tech themselves will tell you that these pedals are just not made for everyone and here's why. As standard, the Invicta pedal is quite stiff with not a lot of travel. This is how I like my pedals, but not everyone does. There's an elastomer kit and long travel kit which can help tune this out, but I'm using them and enjoying them very much without either of those. So if you know you enjoy a hard brake pedal, then you probably don't need to bother yourself with those kits. You'll enjoy the Invictus out of the box. Other manufacturers often supply kits to stiffen things up for those that want it. Acetech seems to be coming at it from the other end. That should tell you everything about what kind of experience they're curating. Having said all that, apparently F1 driver Kevin Magnussen most prefers the long travel kit with the green elastomer from the elastomer kit. That would give this pedal quite a different feel. So the moral of the story here is to just stay open minded. We can say all we like about hard pedals being the most race car-esque, that debate will never end. But the best configuration is the one you like right now and that evolves over time. I used to like soft pedals and I slowly migrated to harder and more direct pedals as both I and my setup progressed and now I'm here. This brake pedal has a reputation for being pretty hardcore and it just so happens that's just the kind of brake pedal style I like nowadays. So if you're pairing these with a good cockpit, you drive with shoes or boots, you're quite seasoned and familiar with low tail brakes and you like harder brake pedals, then the Invictus will be a perfect match for you. You kind of have to be willing to meet Acetech on their terms because that's just their approach. And whilst their approach is great and seems to gel well with me, it's not going to please everyone. There's always the optional accessories to soften things up a bit, but the manual goes to great lengths to explain why they believe a hard pedal is better. So if you do make the Invictus squishier, you're not going to be able to shake that feeling that you've just asked for ketchup to go with your fillet steak at Marco Pierre White's. The Invicta S series pedals are just a throttle and brake set initially, so if you need a clutch then one is available at extra cost. It looks great and it fits right in. It's got good resistance, a detectable but not very dramatic spring curve which can be adjusted, as well as preload adjustment to tweak how strong it feels on initial pressure. Just like the throttle, the end stop isn't cushioned, so you'll be getting metal on metal contact and noise whenever you reach the end of the pedal travel, something you'll do a lot of and brashly if you drive manual gearbox cars. Still, clutch is available if you need it, but if you don't need it, you don't have to pay for it. I guess this is as good a time as any to mention any negatives, and to be honest with you, the only negative that really stands out to me that, that isn't just a matter of ergonomics or taste profile is the fact that the heel plates have some raised aluminium casting bits that have been skimmed off. These can, in rare occasions, catch the heel of your shoe as you come back from the throttle and clutch most predominantly because they're the pedals with the widest range of motion giving you the most chance to catch one of these on your way back. It happens very rarely but it only needs to happen one in every 10,000 corners for it to be an issue given that consistency and dependability is the whole point of high-end sim equipment. However since tightening my laces on my boots a bit more it hasn't happened since. Also Whilst I've never been affected by this, some people do report that their heel gets caught behind this little lip on occasion. At the end of the day, the heel plate is only there to rest your feet, not anchor them, so your feet shouldn't be touching them during the action, but it's a fact of life that the engineer's intention and the user's experience won't always line up. Other than this, there isn't anything I can really point to in terms of potentially disruptive design quirks. 
On the whole, these pedals do feel like they have big company production values, so lots of polish and the ability to inject personality into the pedals that few other companies would have the resources to inject, but they still maintain the DNA of small company hardcore enthusiast level performance. Most people that pay some consideration to the Invicta pedals will be doing so because of their distinctive design. And you know what it's like, whenever you look at something and think, I like that, there's always that question in the back of your head, if I choose this, if I chase my eyeballs, Will I be losing out somehow? Is it all just show and no go? Well, I don't think so. Normally you have to choose between function and form, but if you happen to like the cut of Asetex jib, then you get both. For me, they perform brilliantly and they feel designed with me in mind. And if you are like me and your setup looks vaguely like mine, then you'll probably enjoy them just as much. Thanks for watching this review. Comments and questions are very welcome and appreciated. A like and subscribe are also generous things to do if you can spare them and thank you to those who stopped by to do exactly that. These videos are made for you. Don't forget to check the description for tons more information, links and discounts, including for Acetex official stores and certain resellers as well. Cheers again.